So this is Africa, and here's Ethiopia, smack dab in the middle of the Horn of Africa. This right here is Minnesota, where I grew up, Minneapolis, right in the middle of the US. When I was growing up, this is what I thought about Ethiopia. So I'm guessing that there are people in this audience who can sing all the words to this song like I can. So you have Waylon Jennings, Cyndi Lauper, Michael Jackson, all the musical luminaries, and they're talking about Ethiopia here. I had no idea when I was singing We Are the World at age eight that 22 years later I was going to be doing this in Ethiopia. I grew up thinking of Ethiopia as dry, desolate, the site of all the famines. There are huge famines there in, 19, in the 70s and the 80s. We Are the World and that awful velvet dress that I was wearing, those were inspired by the famine of 1984, where over 7 million people were affected by that famine and a million people died. So there's a global outcry at that point saying we need to pay attention to what's happening in Ethiopia. And that's how most people know of Ethiopia to this day. The first time I went to Ethiopia, however, this is what I saw. Very lush, bucolic, verdant. It was the beautiful landscape. And I was there in October 2006, and I kept thinking of how I grew up understanding Ethiopia and what I had in front of me. And I got a little bit confused. So on the one hand, this show is going to talk about climbing in Ethiopia. I think it's pretty helpful for people to understand why I went to Ethiopia in the first place. So that's coffee right there. And this is me non-caffeinated, OK? So I didn't have any coffee today, and I was in Ethiopia drinking these little cups, which seem benign, but 9, 10, 12 of them a day. And you can imagine you know, a person getting a little wired. But Ethiopia is the birthplace of coffee, and it's the only place that coffee grows wild in the world. So I went there initially as a journalist to write a story about a hunt for wild coffee. And this coffee that we were trying to find sells for over $150 a pound on the US market. That's a huge amount of money for coffee. Coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world. And Ethiopia is one of the poorest countries in the world. So imagine, if you will, that you find a coffee that gets $150 a pound in one of the poorest countries in the world. And what does that do to the economy of Ethiopia? It changes it really dramatically. I was on this coffee expedition, and I was a journalist. So what that means is that you are the person watching and recording, but you're not actually there in being involved in the day-to-day -day mechanics of a trip. I've worked as a climbing guide since I was 19. And what that means is that I'm used to being in charge, and I'm relatively type A. But instead, I'm trying to be the super chill journalist on this trip while we're touring this coffee land. And remember, I was drinking all these cups of coffee. So all these things were, you know, were conspiring towards basically me finding this. This is in northern Ethiopia. And those towers are about 500 feet tall. And when I first saw photos of, of the Nebulet Towers, I realized that I had to go to northern Ethiopia to go climbing, and that that would be the way for me to interact in Ethiopia at a more intimate level. 